Good morning, viewers. I hope that this day finds you healthy and happy. This is Davida Varner from Sims Middle School. I teach eighth grade math there. But now I am honored to be your math teacher for the next six weeks through the MCPSS TV broadcast. In the coming weeks, we will focus on three critical standards. And today we're gonna focus on the first standard. This standard, and at the end of this conclusion, our students, you, will be able to find the distance between two points on a coordinate plane using the Pythagorean Theorem. Optional materials that you may want to have on hand for this lesson are a pencil, paper, calculator, your MCPSS packet, which we will refer to pages 2 through 23, and a device if you want to take pictures of the lessons throughout the, of the slides throughout the lesson. Excuse me. My expectations as your teacher is that you will be attentive, that you will participate, and that you will study each lesson before completing your graded assignments. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. Before we look at our examples, we want to discuss four vocabulary words. A few of these you may recognize. Here is what we need to review for the lesson. The coordinate plane, distance, points, and the Pythagorean theorem. The coordinate plane is a perpendicular intersection of horizontal line, which we call the x-axis, and a vertical line, which we refer to as the y-axis. These axes create four different sections, and for math, we call those quadrants. If you look here at the picture, you will see the four quadrants. Quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. And if you notice, if I go in a counterclockwise order, it creates a C, which is easy to remember for the coordinate plane. There's also a point of intersection in the middle of the two axes. That is called the origin. And that is where the two points, or the two axes meet here, and X and Y values are both zero. The next vocabulary word that we're going to look at is distance. The amount of space between two objects, people, or places. You've probably been watching the news and you've heard them discuss social distancing. When they're talking about social distancing, they're talking about keeping six feet apart. That's the distance between you and one other person. A fun fact about distance is that distance can never be negative. Even if I'm walking backwards or if I'm driving a car in reverse, the distance between where I started and where I stop is still a positive measurement. Here's an example of social distancing, staying six feet apart. Here's an example of distance from one destination to another. Our next vocabulary word we're going to look at are points. We also know them as ordered pairs or coordinate points. Ordered pairs and coordinate points are listed x first, x value first, and then the y value. And an easy way to remember that is if you think of the alphabet, x comes before y. x is a horizontal position and y is the vertical position on the coordinate plane. The X is here, if you look at our picture, we have three, four. That would be three to the right and four up. The, on each axis, X and Y are number lines. And the number lines are on the X axis, negative to the left, positive to the right, and in the dead center, like we said before, that's zero. And on the Y axis, it's positive going up it's negative going down, and in the center there, again, it's still zero. Now we're going to talk about Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is a theorem that this man here, Pythagoras, came up with. It's for right triangles. It says 
that the square length of the hypotenuse, which is considered the C side in a right triangle, is equal to the sum of the squared legs, which are A and B. You may have heard the equ uh, equation before, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now you know where that comes from. The A's form a right angle. If you hold up an L, you can hold it up either way, you'll see that it forms a right angle, a 90 degree angle, which is for legs. And then the hypotenuse is the diagonal. It's the longest side, and it would be across from our 90 degree angle. So here we have an example, A squared. And to be squared, it means that you're doing A times A. You're doing side times side. The area of a um, square is side squared. So A times A, this is that area. B times B, this is that area. Those two added together, the sum would equal your C squared. Let's take a brain break. If, you have, if you're in an empty cold room, where can you go to get warm? Do you have any idea? The corner, it's always 90 degrees. Our example one, let's tackle it. Find the shortest distance between the start and end point and round to the nearest hundredth. So we want to ask ourselves first, what is this problem about? This is, goes along with our ready math material. What is this problem about? Well, to me it looks like it came off Google Maps or some type of mapping program. We have our starting point here. We have our ending point here. We have several different roads and blocks. So it looks like a map. What is it asking? It's asking us to find the shortest distance. The shortest distance between this point and that point, our start and end. And what do we know? Well, we know where our start point is. And we also know where our end point is. And how do we get to solving it? How do we go about solving that? So let's travel. We have to use the roads here. So we can either travel up or we can go left. Let's see what you guys want to do. Up? All right. So if we go up, we need to go up one, two, three, four blocks. Okay, that gets us in the same road that our endpoint is on. And now we can travel left or west. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. If you just noticed, we created an L. That is where our 90 degree angle is, our corner. So we're actually producing or creating a right triangle. That would not be the shortest distance because if I went four blocks and seven blocks, that would be a total of 11 blocks. But I think I can get there a little faster if we do what? That's right. If we draw a diagonal line across from our start point to our end point, and from our previous slide, we learned that that is the hypotenuse the C side, the longest. So now we want to, and when we say longest, let me just clear that up. It's the longest bef between the four and the seven. It's the shortest length between the start and the end because if I use this route, then I will have to consider the four and the seven. But here, the shortest route would, let's see what it would be. So we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem to work that out. So we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And a and b are both legs, so it doesn't matter which one you choose. You could say a is 7 or you could say a is 4. For this lesson, we're going to say a is 4 and b is 7. And you can try this at home and you can reverse those, 7 and 4, and see if it makes a difference. And we have our c squared. So 4 squared would be 4 times 4, and if you have your calculator handy or if you just have quick mental math, then you'll know that 4 times 4 is, that's right, 16. And 7 times 7 would give us 49. Okay, 
Now we need to get the sum of those two. That means that we need to add. So 49 and 16, I don't have a calculator on hand, so maybe I'll just mental math this. I know that 49 is 1 away from 50. So 50 plus 16 is 56, but I need to take it back one. So it's actually 55. Okay. Now I need to take the square root of this problem. The square root of uh, c squared actually cancels out and we're left with c. Here's where you're definitely going to want to use a calculator. So if you have one on hand, you can go to your calculator. Let me find mine. Give me one second. This is exactly what we would be doing if we were in class. So we're going to just act like that's what we're doing here on the video. We want to type in our calculator. There it is. And now we want to put in our 55. Oops, I got to have it on the button to touch it. And I want to take the square root of that. That's this button here. Oops, not twice. Let's go back. 55. The square root would be 7.416. A whole lot of decimals. A ton of decimals. But our answer in our question, it told us to round to the nearest hundredth. So the nearest hundredth is two places after the decimal. And I have a six there. So the six means I need to round my one up to a two. So in fact, I would, my answer would be 7.42. Let's scroll down a little bit. 7.42. And we need to keep our units in there. This would be blocks. So C would equal, oops, C would equal 42 blocks. And back to our picture. 7.42 blocks here. 7.42 blocks, which is close to 7.5, is a lot shorter than 11 blocks. So that's how we use the Pythagorean theorem to find the shortest distance between the start and the end. This is a capture slide, so if you have your device and you want to capture this, you could take a quick snap of what we did. Okay, let's move on to our next example. Our, let's look at our steps first, excuse me. So we, what we just did was we used the Pythagorean theorem formula, a squared plus b squared is c squared. We plugged in our values that we were given. We were given, or we had to find the blocks, but we found that it was a 4 and a 7. We squared them by multiplying them by themselves. And if we're solving for C, which we were, it says that if we were missing one of the legs, um, if you're solving for one of the legs, you will square the given leg and you will square the hypotenuse to find the C. Okay, let's look at example two. Find the distance between home base and second base and round to the nearest tenth. Some of you are probably wishing that you're playing baseball or softball right now, and in time we will get back to that. That is a fun sport. But let's look at this. What is this problem about? This problem is about a baseball diamond. And we know that it is a square because we have 90 feet here and we have 90 feet here. That means the sides are equal. So we already have our uh, right triangle created here. If you can see this. Let's make it red so you can see a little better. We have a right triangle created here. We have our 90 feet, we have our 90 feet, and we're missing our hypotenuse, the C side. What are we going to use? That's right, the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared, whoops, equals C squared. We know that A squared is 90. In this particular example, it doesn't matter because they're both 90. And B squared is also, or B is 90. So now we want to square that. 90 times 90, that's right. 8,100, and the good news is we get to do that again since they're both 90. And now we need to add those together. 8,100 and 8,100 would be 16,200. 
and we're talking about feet here. So now we're at the last step. We don't want c squared. We want to solve for just c. So we need to um, take the square root of this. The opposite of squaring a number is taking its square root. So when I take the square root of c squared, it actually cancels those two out and I'm left with c. Now I need to find the square root of 16,200. We're definitely going to go to the calculator for this one. And so what we want to do is we will put in 16,200 and hit our square root button. So this asks us to round to the nearest tenth. That's one place after the decimal. So I need to look at the hundredths place to determine if I'm rounding or keeping it the same. It's a seven in the hundredths place, so my two is going to round up to a three. So my answer would be 127.3, let me X this out. hundred twenty seven point three feet I didn't leave myself much room there let me rewrite that so you can see it a little better a hundred and twenty seven point three feet is the distance between home base and second base give me one second class trying to get <laughs> that to go away let's see if I can move over here Okay, it's gone. Magic. <laughs> Let's move to our next example. <clears throat> example three. Find the distance between two coordinate points and round to the nearest whole number. Here we have two ordered pairs, or coordinate points, on the quadrant plane. The first one here, one, negative two, that's one in the positive x direction, and two down in the negative y direction and up here we have negative 3 which is 3 in the left direction for x which are the negatives and up 4 which are the positives for y so let's draw we know that we can use our um, <clears throat> Pythagorean theorem to solve this so we're going to draw some legs you can either choose to go down and right or if you chose to go left and down, you'll notice that either way would work. We created a right triangle with a red, but we also created a right triangle with a blue. The legs would be the same. So here I have one, two, three, four, the same up there. I would have one, two, three, four, Okay, and on my sides, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the same is for this. We know that from rectangles. We have two, um, these sides are congruent as well as these sides are congruent. So now we have our legs, but we want to find our hypotenuse. So we're going to be using our Pythagorean theorem. Again, what is this problem about? Two points on the coordinate plane. What is it asking? For us to find the shortest distance, which is this length here that they gave us. And what do we know? Our two points. Now we know our legs, and now we can go about solving it. So our first leg would be four. Our second leg is six. And we don't know our hypotenuse yet. So we're going to leave that as c squared. Four squared would be 4 times 4, if you want me to write this out for you, 4 times 4, that would be 16. 6 times 6, that's right, 36. And now we need to add those together, 36 and 16. And maybe you don't have a calculator handy, you can always go over to the side with scratch paper. I encourage my students to do this, is just use paper and pencil. 6 and 6 is 12, carry my 1, 3, 4, 5, so 52. This time I'm going to write it with my C first. 
And what do you think I'm missing? Sometimes I do this to my students in class, so they'll see if they will correct me or not. That's right. I'm missing that squared on the C. Now I need to solve. I need to solve for C by taking the square root of both sides, both C squared and 52. So here we go. When we do it to this side, you know you've heard that from your previous teachers, that what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So these would cancel because a squared and a square root are um, cancel out. And now we need to find the square root of 52. So pulling up our calculator. And when we're doing the um, square roots, one thing that you can remember is that you can kind of guess where this would fall, what, what number this would fall. If you know perfect squares, you know that 64, the square root of 64 is 8. It's a perfect square, 8 times 8. And then we know 7 is 49, so 49 would be 7 times 7. Well, 7 times 7 is 49. 8 times 8 is 64. And 52 falls between that. So we know this number is going to be, we can kind of guess that this number is going to be between 7 and 8. So let's see. 52, square root, that's right, 7.2. Let's see what it told us to do this time. It says round to the nearest whole number. So we look at our 10th place, it's a 2. It's not greater than 5. I think there's a little round that goes something like this. 5 or more, raise the score. 4 or less, let it rest. So we're going to let it rest. We're not going to change our 7. So C is 7, and on this one, we don't have any units. This was on the coordinate plane. So we actually say 7 units. Let's move on to our next. If you want to take a quick picture of that, that was a capture slide. Any of them that had the videos on them or the cameras on them. So you want to capture this so you can go back and study it um, when you're studying your material. Okay. And a brain break. <laughs> we got to love our brain breaks because sometimes we get caught up in the math and, you know, it helps us to take a break digest everything that we've learned, and then continue to go. And we're going to do one more example. But why couldn't the pony sing a song? Do you all know? She was a little horse. That's right. <laughs> I'm sure you're laughing at home. You can save these jokes and tell them to your friends. Let's go to this example as our last one. Hunter kayaks 48 feet due north in Big Creek Lake. Then he kayaks 55 feet due east before kayaking diagonally across the lake where he started. What is the total distance he kayaks? So what is this problem about? Kayaking in Big Creek Lake. What is it asking for us to find the total amount? But we also need to find how much diagonally. So here we go. Due north would be 48 feet. And if we are going due east, that would be 55 feet. We want to find what it would be diagonally. Okay, we don't know that yet. So we have to do 48 squared plus 55 squared equals our unknown, our C squared. Okay, so we're going to multiply 48 times 48. Um, let's see. Clear that off. One ticket. 48 times 48 is 200 and 2,000 and, whoop, let me pull it back up, 304 feet plus, <clears throat> this is similar to number two on your monograde. I'm going to go ahead and stop right here because we're running out of time for this segment. And so what I want you to do is take a picture of this because this is where I'm going to start as our bell ringer for the next week. We're going to be back here Tuesday, me, you, and we're going to finish here. I'm going to, I'm going to save this slide so that we can find 55 squared. We can find our diagonal length here. And then there's actually a second part. We have to find the total. So what goes along with total? That's right. It is adding. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's lesson. I hope that you will study your material 
And um, we will be back here again Tuesday. I'm excited. I'm ready. And I hope that you will join us again next week. Remember, wash your hands.